first Super Bowl appearance in 1980, ranked second all time in franchise history with just under 27. Thousand passing yards <laughs> and 175 touchdowns. Ooh, is mm -hmm. right. Please welcome to the breakfast table, Ron Jaworski. Hey. Hey. That, that just means I'm old. That's all that. Hey. Hey. I feel like I've been on this show for years because my office yeah. is at NFL Films, uh -huh. right? And I walk in, and there you guys are on every screen. I hear it throughout the day. So finally, good to be with you live. Well, awesome. well uh, we hope all we, uh, we, we hope we London. make you proud. And speaking of all the way in London, you were part of one of the first NFL games in London in 1988, wow. and that was a preseason game. So what was that experience like back then? And now, 30 years later. What's the differences that you notice coming back out to London? Nate, you did your research. That's good. <laughs> you're, you're all Shout over it. And, and I remember that game. I, I was with the Miami Dolphins at the time, a uh, backup to Dan Marino. We played Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers, and we actually practiced together the entire week. It was a preseason game. It was called the American Bowl at the time. Mm -hmm. And I got the sense, even back then, that football was going to work in London. The crowd was enthusiastic. They were energetic. They loved football. Our practices were packed with people. They were learning the NFL game. Wembley Stadium, the old Wembley Stadium yeah. was packed. And I knew right then and there, this was going to work in London. And obviously, wow. 30 years later, look what we have. Awesome. Oh, it's incredible. Goodness. Well, listen, Ron, I did a little research, too. Uh -oh. And I found out that the Philadelphia Eagles are 3-4. and four. They're the world <laughs> champions, and they have a 3-4 and four record. I'm looking at that emblem there on your jacket. You were one of the faces of this franchise, the reigning world champs. What's going on? Well, this is the Super Bowl ring. You know, we all, we all love the Super Bowl rings, but there is a Super Bowl hangover. And I've said it for years, and I've, you know, I've been around this league since 1973 as a player, as an analyst, and I kind of understand the players. And you get the, you, the whole offseason, people say, hey, you're great. Oh, you're the best. No one will beat you. And you start believing that stuff. And then there's a big target on your chest. And people want to knock you off that high pedestal that you have. And that's exactly what happened with the Philadelphia Eagles right now. And injuries. This team has been decimated by injuries. Yeah. But that's, you can't make that as an excuse or use that as an excuse. It's part of the game. But this is still a really good football team. And by the way, if you would have told me the Eagles and the Jaguars would be meeting in London with three and four records mm -hmm. two months ago, I would have said, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. right. I mean, this is a must-win game for either the Jaguars or, Philly, or, or the Eagles in this game. A lot of season left, too. A lot of season left, but you don't want to fall too far behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Depth an issue, obviously, with the injuries, of course. There was a little bit of roster turnover, but I sort of said going into the season, I don't think it's the same team because they don't have Filippo there. Frank Reich also departs. Did we sort of underestimate their effect on this team going into this year? No, I think the quarterback play has been outstanding. You start mm -hmm. out with Nick Foles, you know, while Carson was, was mending. Carson's now healthy. He's playing at a very, very high level yeah. once again. But, you know, we talk about the room, and Nate, you know, you were part of that room as a player. Of you course. Know? And, 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 the, and the room is important. And the room is the quarterback room and those coaches, yep. Frank Reich, John Filippo. The chemistry between the quarterbacks and, and the coaches was very, very good. Frank Reich is down in Indianapolis. John Filippo is down in Minnesota. They are gone. You have two new coaches. Yep. And it takes time for that chemistry to develop. It's coming, but it's not there yet. It's not bad, but I don't think it's at the level where it was the past couple of years. Mm. Jaws, we're talking Eagles, Jaguars all this week, but I know you cover the entire league. Let's just call it like it is. If you could have one quarterback right now any quarterback in the league Ooh. to be the man under center for your team who are you take okay can I can I get two choices get on this okay. can I get two yeah. not yeah. one I think the most exciting quarterback right now in the league is Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. he, I mean what he's doing is just ridiculous I mean he's I mean he's taking <laughs> this league by storm it, it, I asked him, and he does things that are you sure yeah I am kind of shocked I, I am shocked. Okay. But then you look at the weapons that he has, and Andy Reid has lost his mind with his design. I mean, <laughs> I know Mr. Conservative Andy Reid, you know, as a head coach in Philly all those years. Now, I mean, I mean he, must, yeah. he must sit there in, the, in, in the, the science room, you know, drawing up all these crazy <laughs> plays. Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind. Just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's right? nuts. It's nuts. But if you, if you say, what quarterback do you want to lead your one team? Game. One game. One game. I am going with Drew Brees. Wow. Right now. Oh, Brady. Right now. Okay. Drew Brees. Hey, Brady Phil, sure. the all-time greatest. I'm going to to give you that right sure. now. Okay. But right now, and, and thank you for mentioning the tape, because yeah. the tape doesn't lie, the eye in the sky doesn't lie. Nate, we live with that. Of course, and, and, of course. And that's what it's all about. But if you watch the level of Drew Brees right now, the way he's orchestrating offense from the New Orleans Saints, he is playing lights out 
phenomenal football right now. So to win one game right now, I'm taking Drew Brees. Love it. All right, now let's go to the other side of things, Jaguars and their quarterback situation. Some people will say that their struggles are solely on the shoulders of Blake Bortles. There's times we saw him play well, like the win over the Patriots, and then there's times where, quite frankly, you sit back and you say, what was that? What do you think the struggles are when it comes to Blake Bortles? Number one, he's careless with the football, and that's where it starts. And you cannot be careless with the football. If you watch Blake Bortles and look at stats, which you know, are, it can sometimes lead to how a player is playing. He's thrown eight interceptions, mm. and he's fumbled four times and lost three. He personally has turned the ball over 11 times. Mm. You know, in the National Football League, if Oof. you're plus one or better in the turnover, giveaway, takeaway category, you win 80% of the yep. time. If you're minus, you're going to lose 80% of the time. Yep. You must protect the football. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to Blake Bortles Pro Day, and I was blown away. He has incredible talent. After I study all the tape and college tape and everything and do my background, his Pro Day was phenomenal. His mechanics have regressed. Really? And the National Football League, if you don't get better mechanically every single week, mm -hmm. you got to coach quarterbacks hard, you got to coach mechanics hard, you got to be a wonk to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. He has not done things the right way mechanically. And when you have poor mechanics, now at times he, he can get the job done and right. does things really well, but there are times the mechanics break down, and that's when the mistakes the happen. Mechanics are worse now than they were at his pro day? Yes. Yeah. Wow. In fact, think back to uh, a couple, three years ago when he was dropping that ball yeah. way down sure, here. Yeah. Right, right. And, man, I'll tell you, if you're a defensive back in the NFL, you love guys like that because that split second, they jump those routes, and they are on. Nate will tell you, hey, if a quarterback's given any hint or indicator where he's going, makes his job tougher. They're on top of it. So his release has been far too slow to be consistent. Now, like I said, there are times – you know, he looks like the guy that was a first-round draft choice. Yeah. Then there are times you go, man, it's a head scratcher. Come sure. on, come on, come on. But I, I, you know, I know Doug Marone. I played actually with Doug Marone with yeah. the Dolphins, and Doug is a he's a hard, tough nose. You know, sure. he, he wants to win in the, the, the offensive line, the yeah. defensive line. That's where he wants to win. But he won't tolerate turnovers. I guarantee you, mm. there's gonna be a very short leash for Blake Bortles on Sunday. He is three and zero oh in London. So mm -hmm. he's got how many games have he played? Oh, hey? <laughs> The, off the field, and they put Kessler, and I feel like that might reignite something. It'll be a great game, we can both agree, on Sunday. I, I agree with that. While we have you, though, yeah. we have to talk about this. Bill Belichick, last week, was asked about Khalil Mack, because they were facing the Bears, and what he thought about him being in the discussion with Reggie White and Lawrence Taylor. Take a look at what Bill Belichick had to say. I, I knew you were going to do this yeah, to me. I, I, I knew you were going to Yeah, I'm not putting anybody in Lawrence Taylor's class, so... You put everybody down below that. that. That's with a lot of respect to a lot of good players now, but we're talking about Lawrence Taylor. Just we have a researcher named Hamilton here, and before the show, I was looking at the many battles you had. With one LT, you had, I did my research. Yeah, you faced is... him more than any other quarterback. Wow. Is there a defensive player in the league right now that you would put in the same class as LT? I think I was also the most sacked quarterback by the <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, uh, Thank you very much on yeah. that, Peter. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, he's in a class by himself. Bill is absolutely right. There are a lot of great impact players in the National Football League. Lawrence Taylor is the guy that you game plan for. Go back and think of his comments Joe Gibbs made when he was coaching the Redskins. Uh -huh. The offseason, they changed their entire offensive scheme. They went to two tight ends. They brought fullbacks you know, on their roster because they knew if they were going to beat the New York Giants, they had to account for Lawrence Taylor. He dominated the league for 10 years. The best defensive player I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you right there. Listen, I wish you could stay all, all I know, we got a million other questions. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm just soaking it up. Yeah, right. yeah, that's Listen, it. Listen, you come to NFL films. You were one of the best <laughs> when you played, and of course, right now, you're one of the best at what you do. You're such a beautiful mind when it comes to sport. Thank you for coming and dropping gems on us. The legend. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey, you should be a voice of Matt. You're just saying that right <laughs> <laughs> I got that feeling, man. Josh, got that. an exciting game. As you said, it's yeah. a must-win game.